Is that kind of lame? Yeah, that's kind of lame. I'm gonna go stand over here. Hello everyone, welcome into Fatty's Feast where we make the best food you'll ever eat without leaving your backyard. My name is Josh and the time has finally come where we're gonna check out the new and improved Patriot Pits Freedom 120. Let's get started. All right, this is the long-awaited new smoker. I promised you guys I was going to get a Patriot Pits pit, and the time has finally come where it's in my yard. It's actually been here um, for like three weeks, and this is the first time I'm actually touching it. But today we're taking an overview, uh, first look at this pit, and we're gonna be doing our test burns. We're gonna be talking about the features. So we're not cooking anything, we're just doing our test burn, and this is something I really stress all the time. You want to do test burns to learn the smoker. Sure, I could throw a brisket on here because how bad could I screw that up? But I don't want to do that. We want to know and learn how this smoker operates before we put any food on. You're all familiar with the Freedom 94. This pit is similar, but you can tell there are some obvious differences. But just like the Freedom 94, this pit is all 3 8 inch thick steel, all the way from the cooking chamber to the firebox. It's what you're gonna get. There's no shortcuts taken with this pit. The other thing you'll notice is this pit is on a trailer. So this comes standard on a trailer. There's no casters or carts or anything like that. If you want this pit, you're gonna get it on a trailer and it just makes sense. It's easier to move. And the last thing is this is a pre-season smoker. So you can season it again if you'd like to, but it does come standard pre-seasoned. I didn't have to do any work to this. I just lit a fire and let it rip. So I'm gonna bring you in closer. And we're gonna talk about each and every feature of this smoker, starting with the trailer, and then we're gonna work our way to the firebox and all the way through. So let's get started. All right, so I have the help of a very good friend and professional cameraman, Dan, also from Patriot Pits. He's assisting me today with this video. So we're gonna start down here at the trailer. So first of all, we have these beautiful wheels. Now notice this green cap on here. This means they're helium filled, is that what you said? Oh, ni nitrogen, excuse me, nitrogen filled. What does that mean? It's just not going to matter whether you're in cold temperatures or hot temperatures. You're not gonna lose air. A very, very cool design. These rims are beautiful too. I really like those. Moving up to these fenders, these are all custom made fenders. Actually, this whole trailer, this whole smoker is custom made, by the way, but these fenders are solid. I mean, I can I can chill on these. I'm pretty comfortable. I might I might stay here in the winter time when it's a little bit cold. But if we work our way around this way, we'll notice we have these stickers on here making it roadworthy. We got these beautiful lights right here. These are recessed lights too. Notice too, as we come down this trailer here, we don't see any wiring. All the wiring is internal. And then if Dan brings the camera in right here, notice we don't have any opening here. So this is square tubing. If we go over to my crappy trailer over here, we see that this is open. That's what you're gonna get on typical trailers. And of course you got your plug here, you got your chains, heavy duty chains. I will point out that there is a trailer jack on here. This wheel does not come standard, okay? So I did go to Harbor Freight and buy this thing for like 15 bucks or something, but it's holding it up just fine. The reason that there's no wheel on here is because we don't want the smoker to roll. So it comes standard with just a typical jack stand with a little plate. But if you just put this chalk right here, this professional wood wheel chalk that I made, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Look at this craftsmanship here. Like the, this, this is an amazing plate that Jason puts on here. It looks absolutely beautiful. And then of course, we come up and we see our wood rack. Once again, this is all handmade. This pipe is beautiful. This is heavy duty material right here. Even coming into the inside here, where we can see that he put all this together. Look at this piping. Your wood's not gonna fall through or anything like that while you're on the road if you're, you're towing wood or something. We'll come all the way back here and we'll notice that we have this amazing license plate bracket. You know, for those states where they require you to register your stupid trailers like Connecticut. I love it. I absolutely love this place. And then we have our lighting, better lighting than I've seen on most trailers, honestly. And this is just a smoker. Can you believe that? Let's look at this. You can fit a cooler in here, right next to the firebox. Nothing can go wrong, but just to give you a little bit of a perspective on what you can fit in here, this is your standard cooler, right? Obviously you're gonna take it out, you know, don't, don't leave in here. This cooler is already kind of screwed, so we don't need that. But this trailer itself is about 11 and a half feet long, and I wrote it down. It is 70 inches across, so what is that in math terms? Like five and a half feet? Six? No, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so here we are at the firebox. This is where the fun really begins. So, once again, three-eighths inch thick 
insulated firebox and the sun's coming out. This is awesome. <laughs> I love the lighting here. If we open this guy up, we got a roaring fire in here. Actually, it's not. One thing I will say is when I started this fire up today, obviously we're not cooking anything, so I didn't put charcoal in here. I just used paper and a few pieces of uh, kindling. But this thing was up to temperature in less than 15 minutes. From the point I lit the fire to then. That makes sense, right? So took no time at all for it to be burning a clean fire and have it up to temperature. Obviously I wouldn't throw food on right then because I'd really want to get a nice coal bed going, but just sort of puts it in perspective that you can do that and it doesn't take any time at all. And Dan's gonna throw me this piece of wood right here. This is the typical size split that we'd use in this firebox. It's, I think, pretty similar to the 94 size. So we're looking at about 11 inches and then across we're looking at probably about three, two to three inches. You can probably go a little bit bigger if you want to, but this is kind of what I like to use. Thank you. Thanks. So we're just waiting for this to start up. Don't put golf balls in there, okay? Dan's been, Dan's been throwing me some wood. We don't want to use practice golf balls, even though they're kind of shitty. One thing to note is with this firebox, it is the same size as the 94. So the diameter is about two feet and then the length is about 26 inches. So, you know, I had to do inches and feet just to screw with you. But you can really control your temperatures within this firebox by pushing the fire forward or moving it back. In this case, I have it closer to the door, but if you wanna have it a little hotter, there's other things you can do, like push it forward, you can screw with the grates, but we'll talk about those a little later on. It's just a little oversized, so you can make those adjustments if you need to. And I really like the fact that I can use a shovel in this guy too. I did that with the 94 a lot, but it just makes things so much easier. So as I bring us in closer here, one thing I wanna point out is this extra notch on the door. So this is where you control your airflow. On the original design, there was only three of these on the 94 I was using, but he has added a fourth one. Um, I haven't screwed with it a lot, but I've already noticed somewhat of a difference on here. And then if we look in the firebox, you see the insulated base. So I did say that the firebox was insulated. Um, it's just the bottom but it does make a huge difference when controlling your temps and maintaining a cold bed. Another thing I wanna point out is this reinforcement that's put on the door to prevent warping. So if we look at the length of this guy, I mean, that's about eight inches of just additional metal that's preventing this door from warping. And notice when I close this, you're not hearing anything, right? That's, that's pretty freaking cool. And that's because of these amazing hinges that Jay put on here. So these guys, oh, if I could use my tape measure without cutting myself again, these are about six inches long, the perfect length. And then if we go down here to this guy, this is about eight inches. That might be a little too big for some people, but all of these hinges are double CNC. They work very, very well. And then over here too, I'll notice, Jay put this little nipple on here. Isn't that cute? Because what was happening before is this handle was going down and actually not latching the firebox. So now we have that there prevents it from doing that. And notice when I let go of the door, it stays put. It ain't flailing open or anything. So one thing I wanna take a look at is the temperature on the firebox exterior versus the tire over here. A lot of people did comment and say on the Freedom 94 video that does the firebox heat, the radiant heat affect the tire? So if we take my heat gun here and take a temperature of the firebox, 332, 334, right? If we go over to this here, and granted this is in the sun, so keep that in mind. What is that, 145? I mean, and just, just for an experiment, we'll go right here. I mean, it's pretty even all around because of the sun. Black is going to make things hotter. But notice that none of this heat really is affecting anything on this tire. Obviously the tire is protected, but when it comes to the trailer itself, you don't have to worry about any of the paint peeling or damage or warping or any of that stuff. Okay, as we come in close here, we're gonna look at this shelf. Okay, notice that this shelf is stationary, unlike the 94 model. So with this smoker, you would think that, well, why couldn't you have a fold down shelf? The problem is to maximize your area here, if you had a fold down shelf, obviously it wouldn't get past this fender. So if you wanted the shelf to fold down, it would be about here and that would look kind of silly. But at the end of the day, the shelf looks great and you can use it, you can sit on it. Obviously I did that with the Freedom 94 and included are these awesome tool holders. So we got some 
hangers here. We also got this paper towel holder. I didn't know what that was for. Dan had to tell me that, but this thing is sort of cool. As we go underneath, notice that this drip pan here is all the way toward the front of the smoker. On the 94, originally the design had it right in the center, but they have since moved it. And this is on both the 94 and the 120. And it also comes standard with this amazing little Barons, I think that's how you pronounce it, pan thing, along with a ball valve. Moving up to the cooking chamber now, notice we do also have our two Teltru thermometers. And let's take a look at this beautiful design here with the handle, the counterbalance. First thing I wanna point out is notice this is all one piece. The handle is not just welded down here to the door. Now when it comes to this hinge, let's look at these right here. These are bushings. These aren't just normal hinges. That's important because at the end of the day, these are never going to wear out. They're quiet, they're very well made, so you're not gonna have wear and tear on these. They're gonna last a freaking lifetime, just like the life of this smoker. And then the next thing I wanna talk about is this counterbalance. Notice the craftsmanship here, just this attention to detail. He could have just left this as one tube. He actually rounds this off. And when it comes to this counterbalance, obviously the design is really cool. Everything is one piece leading up. So the really cool thing to know about these counterbalances is they're not just a piece of metal that Jay throws on here and calls it a day. Every counterbalance is made specific to the pit. So it's all dependent on what this door is doing and what it weighs. So sometimes what you'll have happen is you might struggle in the beginning to open a door. And then once you start opening it, all of a sudden the counterbalance takes that weight and pulls it back. That doesn't happen with here. He takes the time to measure everything out, weigh it, and make sure that when you start opening this door, notice I'm doing it with one hand, that's kind of nice. When you start opening this door, there's no difference. The effort I'm putting in, I'm not strong, I, I shook there for a second. <laughs> but there's no difference in the effort I put in from the time I start opening it all the way to the time it reaches the top. And similarly, when I close it, same thing. I'm not feeling pulled or anything. Obviously it's heavy for some people, but that counterbalance is a must if you're gonna purchase this smoker. And before we get into the inside of this bad boy, just to give you the measurements of the cooking chamber itself, the length of this cooking chamber is 61 inches with the door being eh, about 49 and a half. Good size door for this, obviously. The diameter, same as the firebox, 24 inches. All right, I'm gonna have Dan come in here. We're gonna take a look at the inside of this chamber. So once again, I'll just lift this with one hand and this is what we got. Notice same shelf design as with the Freedom 94. So we got our top shelf here, that slides out. I don't wanna burn my hand, so I'm not gonna do that. But then down here, we have our shelves that at the moment look kind of stationary, right? It doesn't look like they're gonna go anywhere, but you can take this shelf out and you can make room to slide this other shelf, depending on if you want some hotter cooking or to get closer to the firebox for whatever you're making. So what I'm gonna do now is our first test. We're gonna put in our temperature probes. Now this isn't something you should do to really figure out how your smoker works. I'm just kind of doing this for fun, just to see the evenness across the grates. We're gonna get into actually doing a real temperature test in a bit, but I'm just gonna come in here. I have one probe that's gonna go closest to the chimney, I have another one that's gonna go in the middle, another one that's gonna go close to the firebox, and the last one we're gonna put on the top shelf and see what happens. All right, got our temperature probes in. Didn't wanna really put that on camera, but I'm gonna close this door here and we'll let that rip as we start talking about the rest of the smoker. Now we're at the final portion of this smoker, which is the stack. And notice I did shut my wires in here just cause I'm lazy, but there is this little port that you can feed your probes through and run the wires through. And you can easily fit four probes through there with the wires, not that big of a deal. If I were doing a real cook, where I was using four probes, I would do that, but we're not doing that today. We're just gonna leave these on for a few minutes. When it comes to the stack, obviously this is a tall stack, but it does fold down. We just got this design right here where you can undo this and it'll fold down and rest on this hook back here. Really, really slick design. I really like this and it looks cool going down the road. From the collector itself, all the way to the top of the stack is about 57 inches, so, no concern there because you can fold it down. So don't worry about fitting it in your garage or anything. Now, obviously we do have the collector on here, helps a huge deal with our temperature controls. Notice there's these little notches in here. And this is designed to help us know where our stack damper is. So if I put it right in the middle here, it's all the way closed. And then if I move it out, we have halfway. If I move it to here, we're all the way open. 
And I can do either or. This thing swivels all the way just like that. Very, very easy to use. Okay, so it's been about 10 to 15 minutes now. We've had these probes on. We're gonna check out what these temperatures are doing. So Dan's gonna bring us close in to our monitor here. So the first one here is closest to the firebox. This is the middle of the cooking chamber. This is the end of the cooking chamber near the collector. And this is the top shelf. So as we open this up, I wanna point out something to you. Let's go right into our hottest spot, which is right here. Now, once again, every smoker is going to have a hot spot, right? But I wanna bring your attention to something really quick. Notice right here how we already have this kind of heat that's coming up, right? And this is very obviously the hottest part of the smoker. But this probe right here is directly where the heat is coming up from the firebox. So this is about six inches off the deflector plate that's there. And trust me, I know six inches very well. It's the perfect length. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Might be a little too big sometimes, but six inches right from here is extremely impressive to have a temperature difference of about 50 degrees or 75 degrees with this entire smoker being pretty much the same. And you know what? You're not cooking anything there. You're not gonna put anything there. So we really can get that hot spot closest to the firebox. I don't think you can get any closer than that. So you have all this space right from here all the way to the end and all this up top to throw your food, food, <laughs> food on. There we go. Up at the top here, we're noticing about, you know, a, a 50 degree or so difference. I shouldn't even say that. It's like 40 degrees. But this is where you're gonna put things that need to cook a little faster if you're crisping up chicken wings or something along those lines. Right here between these two probes, just about a 10, 15 degree difference is what we've been seeing. So you can really put your brisket right here. I, I don't, like, if I'm just holding my hand like this, I don't feel a real difference at all. I mean, it's, it's a little cooler right here, as you can imagine, but with this being open, it's obvious that the hot spot, the hottest part of the smoker is right here, but I can even hold my hand there probably for like a whole day and not really care. And in my next video, I will hold my hand there for an entire day, so you can really see what I'm talking about, because I can definitely do it. So what we're gonna do now is our fun test. We're gonna take these probes out, just like so. And instead of doing what I would typically do, which is a biscuit test, I didn't really feel like spending $10 on biscuits to cover this entire smoker because it is a little bit bigger. So we're gonna try something different. So here we have bread. Yes, bread. I got a comment saying I should try the bread test and I never really thought about it before, but this is gonna make things a little more complicated because bread's gonna cook obviously faster than a biscuit. So we're really gonna see how this smoker performs when we do this. So as I come over to here, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna try to cover the length of the smoker in bread. This is just standard potato bread. So we're really gonna see what goes on on this smoker. So we'll just position them out about, like that looks about six inches, right? We're gonna position them out just about six inches. I'm pretty, pretty good at knowing that. So we'll go just along here. I might move these down just a little bit so we have some ample room to space these out. I'm not gonna go too close to the hot spot. That's about as close as I will go, and that actually pretty much is in the hot spot. We can throw some more down here. And only throw three up top. Actually, you know what, let me throw four up top. Because this is really the area that we're gonna be concerned about when we're cooking something. So, we're gonna keep our end pieces here because who eats these? And we're gonna shut this down. We'll come back in about three minutes, probably, and see what's going on. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. We've had some interesting luck with this bread. Not sure if the bread test is better than the biscuit test uh, because bread takes a little bit longer to smoke apparently. Um, and biscuits, you know, you can see how they rise and whatever and really see the doneness of them. But I think we have some good results. So as we come in here down at this temperature probe, we're running about, what is that? 290-ish and then down here, we're a little bit lower around 270. So as we open this thing up here, we have some really, really cool results. As we've been checking on this, this was actually the first bread to toast, okay? So this one, it's pretty toasty right here because we're higher up and we're right near the fire. Down here, this is our next bread. Now, this is, I had my probe here earlier. 
So we're about eight inches. Trust me, I know eight inches. But that's what we're looking at. Obviously, facing toward the firebox, you're gonna have that. Same thing with the back here. Pretty even, but look at this. This is the bread that from this point on is all freaking even. Like, th that's, that's cooked. This down here, this is cooked. I mean, it's cooked. Up here, a little bit darker also, but we're running higher temperatures. We look at this guy, even right here. I mean, these are all pretty even if we look at this. So this just really goes to show you that this smoker, when you have these temperatures, I mean, it's, it's a machine. It's cooking everything even. And it shows you how much cooking space you truly have where you can get even temperatures. At the end of the day, if you're doing a brisket, guess what? Your point's gonna be toward the fire, right? So it's gonna be protecting it. You could fit, I don't know, six, it, that's probably being a little generous, but you could probably fit six briskets on here and be good to go. Obviously you don't wanna put them up here, but you could throw briskets, racks of ribs, you could probably do eight pork butts if you wanted to. The space on here is freaking great. One last thing I'll point out to you guys, look at that smoke coming out of there. It's not the dirtiest smoke we've ever had, but you can see there's a good amount of smoke. If I bring you down to the cooking chamber here, do you see anything seeping out? Do you see any smoke? Nothing. This just goes to show the craftsmanship and the attention to detail in the smoker. This is one of Jason's biggest things he works on, is making sure this door seals without any bleeding, without any leaking, there's, there's literally nothing. And we have all that smoke coming out still. Like absolutely nothing, no modifications to this thing. And the more you use the thing, the better it's going to conform to itself. And look at that. Look at all that smoke we have. Amazing. And still when we close it, nothing is coming out. Unfreaking believable. Two things I wanna mention also before we go is that I finally have my hands on this beautiful firebox tool. You can really do anything with this guy. You can move your fire. It's got the nice handle on it. It's a solid piece. It's not something cheap that's just gonna bend or break or warp or anything. Also, we have, look at this thing. I've talked about this thing so many times when we had our promotion for fatties, but this is the custom charcoal chimney. Look at this thing. The flames, like, is it necessary? I mean, probably not but it's kind of cool. Like it's a nice heavy duty charcoal chimney that'll last you a lifetime as well. The last thing I want to point out to you guys is keep in mind, I don't get paid by these guys at all to showcase their product. I truly believe in what the guys at Patriot Pits are trying to do. Jason is a master craftsman. He puts so many hours into these smokers and I just really, really like their product. I, I can't say it enough. I'm not making millions off that. Like it, it's, that's not the case. I purchased this out of my own pocket because I love it. This is my new baby. I wanted it. So you can believe whatever you want to believe, but I would be upfront with you guys and say if they were paying me, you know, a few million dollars to make this video, well, maybe not, but you know, we'll see. But no, I'm not making any money off them. So just know that everything I'm saying today, even though I wrote a script down so I could cover all the points because I can't remember everything because I'm stupid, it's, it's all me and it's all me being genuine and showing you what this product truly can do. That being said, if you want more information on Patriot Pits and you wanna check out this smoker or possibly get one for yourself, please check out the link in my description. That'll bring you to their website. I'll put the Instagram link. If you want some more information, if you wanna contact Jason about pricing, because there are certain things that do come standard with the pit and there are also some add-ons. Just really quick on this pit, the shelf is an add-on as well as the top cooking grate. That's also an add-on. On the firebox as well, you can also have that uh, with a little warming tray. So you can warm your wood. He'll just put that right on top. And no, other than the warming tray, there will be no modifications to the firebox where you may have to cut the firebox to possibly do other things. It's a pure smoker. It's not anything else. Just, I know you're gonna ask that. No, it's not gonna be done. So don't even ask, they don't do it. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, please smash that like button, get this content out to more people and leave a comment on your thoughts about this smoker. You know, if you're interested in one, if you think it's the best thing ever, or if you think it sucks, I, I'd love to hear from you guys and we can always take that feedback. I can send it to the guys at Patriot Pits for them to see what they think. But over here, I'm gonna put a video specifically designed for you. You're gonna love it, so check it out. And over here will be some playlist. I don't know which one. It'll be cool though. Hours of entertainment just for you. Smack dab in the middle. You can see this bald, 
diabetic, bearded, all around average C minus looking face so much every two weeks or whatever. And until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hungry.